Hello, and thanks for tuning in. I'm going to try and stamp out one of the new birch tree uh, designs. It's the first time I'll be using them. And I'll be doing this on a quarter page card. Um, and let's get right into it. I was thinking about doing something kind of a monochromatic and uh, stamping something in the foreground and, uh, I don't know, having this little spot color. Uh, someone asked me about this recently, um, what I'm using on this acrylic block. They thought it might be a, just a bare acrylic block, but what this is is the, uh, is the tack and peel. There's a thin, um, I don't know what this is, it's kind of a rubber sheet or something like that. And it's very tacky and it's a reusable piece. You don't take it off the block once you put it on there, although I guess you can if this thing, you know, if you decide you ever don't want to use it, but if it ever loses its tack, um, uh, you're supposed to just wash it off and let it air dry and it regains its tackiness, so, so far so good. And uh, it is made out of uh, some kind of rubber, so it, it does have a little bit of cushion to it, so it's not as if you're stamping on just kind of a, a bare, you know, really hard um, uh, piece of uh, plastic or something like that. Or it's not like a double stick tape or something like of that sort. get some larger acrylics. This one kind of sticks out a little bit of me, so I need a little bit of a larger one, or a longer one. And I'm kind of stamping, eh, tapping this off down here, because I'm going to put something in the foreground later on, so that's where a little bit of planning comes on eh, into play. I'm going to stamp this, these birch trees, um, a little bit off the top of the page so I'm not stuck with uh, this is the smaller version. I don't want to have these, you know, the tops of some of these um, trunks just kind of, you know, ending uh, abruptly uh, within the scene. Okay. And see, I just, you know, this comes right off. You can just put it on there and it, you know, it sticks. And then when you're done, you just peel it right off, so. Um, okay, let's see. Let me do something with this, with a smaller one here. I thought I'd go for some, uh, birch trees in the background. Just stamp them a little bit higher to represent something a little bit farther back. In uh, Western perspective, um, I think the things a little bit higher up are uh, represent something a little bit farther in general. Okay. So we have a little bit of forest work in here. And let's see. Oh, good. I have my sedge filler stamp. Let me fill in with a little bit of that. stamps on top of it. Okay, uh, let me see now. Now I have these alcohol-based pens and I, I just played around with it a little bit and uh, in the last uh, scene and I, I liked what how those looked so I, I'm gonna use those in this scene uh, again. So that might kind of, uh, you know, uh, change uh, my approach to the coloring on, on this somewhat. 
and I'll do a little experimentation with it. Okay. Uh, in this grassy area. Now again, this is kind of going to kind of be a monochromatic piece, so. But uh, I do have a little bit of an oscillation between dark and lights in here, okay? Just for uh, some variation. And what I'm going for in this scene is, again, if it's going to kind of be some kind of... I want to I go for some kind of misty, kind of... I don't know what the word is. Evocative uh, imagery, you know, like a landscape. Let's see if I can do something like that. It's always one of those things when you're kind of experimenting around with new stamps, you always kind of have to uh, get the feel of them, see what they look like, see what they look like in different compositions and different colors. Um, and when you start working with them a little bit more, you know, kind of in the back of your mind, what you're kind of doing is you're kind of, uh, you know, making a catalog, uh, so to speak, of uh, know, that image, and then what kind of comes to mind a little bit more, the more you use them, is uh, other imagery that can go with them well, so that when you're working on a scene, uh, either consciously or subconsciously, I think, you know, these other images will come to mind, so right now it's, uh, it's pure experimentation. And, by the way, this is a Memento Grey. It's called London Fog. And Memento inks, once again, are a fairly thick ink. They don't dry too fast. And they spread very nicely you know, over a card. And... They provide a foundation coat of ink, so if you're going on, like I am right now, with a Marvy number one black, and that one is um, much thinner, and it could potentially leave a much stronger mark, you know, like a, like something like that, on your card, but if you do it over the top, the top of a, a thicker ink that you've applied in a good saturation, um, it will coat your paper and it'll make the other um, colors spread really nicely for you. One of the things, though, when you start to apply some of these inks, if you have a good, solid foundation, you know, like I would recommend of a, you know, a thicker ink, sometimes when you start going on with these uh, thicker inks, you're kind of, you know, you wish the process would kind of speed up. You want it to get a little bit darker, you know, but see, as I spread it around, it kind of pulls a lot of the ink off. You know, so we pay the price, you know, kind of for, uh, you know, the ease of application and the less precarious nature of it. Now, you could take and, you know, I mean, you could uh, start to heat set some of these layers right here just so that, you know, that base layer, the thicker layer of whatever you're using kind of um, 
dries and isn't quite as uh, resistant to, uh, you know, absorption. But, you know, uh, I don't know if I would do something like that. Um, I think a kind of a smoother application is very uh, advantageous, you know, in a scene building, so. All right. Let's see. Okay, let's go back to the... Uh, now, I almost forgot about something on this tack and peel. It's really sticky so that if you lay it down somewhere, don't put like a, you know, a paper towel over it or something like that, or a piece of paper. Otherwise, that uh, object will really stick to it, you know, and you don't want something like paper, you know, like a paper towel on there. And, you know, leaving all that... Uh, fiber and whatnot on, on the top of the uh, adhesive. Okay, this is... Um... Huh. I don't remember what the name of this branch is. I'll, do, I'll put it in the notations. But it's a very prickly looking bush, bare bush. Uh, the concept uh, of that bush right down there is I could see it being used in a foreground or whatever for some really uh, pokey looking textures, but the way I envisioned it was, you know, having it like a bare branch, but then you can put like little blossoms on it or something like that, you know, like spring is coming around, so you have this real kind of nice contrast of uh, something very hard and craggy and pokey and sharp next to something kind of colorful and soft. I thought it would be kind of a uh, nice contrast. All right, let's see. Um, let's pull out, these are some alcohol-based pens. Uh, I'm sure a lot more of you are familiar with Copics. This is the Marvy um, brand. And you can get, you know, various values. This one's really super light blue. And let's try this birch right here. Now what I'm going to decide is um, which side of this tree, do, you know, these trees do I want the lighting coming from. Uh, Alcohol-based pens, of course, they should not smear or blend out the uh, water-based inks that you've uh, already applied, you know, because they're a different binder. Alcohol should not mix with the... Uh, uh, dye-based inks. This is a little bit of blue on here. I, I, I don't necessarily want a blue, so... I'm just applying it down, and I think what I'll do is I'll, uh... go back into it and blend that out a little bit. Um, this is a little bit of a... kind of a sea mist green, and then when I do use it over the top of that blue, it kind of puts the blue back into solution and I can blend it into the uh, scene with uh, with another color. In this case it's the green. Okay. Uh, 
Let's go for a gray. This is a darker gray. You can see some of these details on there, these little eyes. And you can come across on some of those. You don't have to use these pens, you can use, you know, basically any pens you want. Now naturally, the thing that I'm using these for, the um, stylus tool just wouldn't be conducive for it. It's just too, you know, it's too, uh, it's too detailed of an area. And some of this ink down at the, uh, the base of the trunks. Let's introduce a little bit of color down there into that grass. How about that? Yeah, a little spot coloring. This is very bright. And again, I don't want, you know, that.